Hi, everybody. My name is Lori Michelin, and I'm coming to you today from the Translational Bioenergetics Laboratory at the University of Washington School of Medicine's Department of Radiology. Uh, we are talking to you today about the functional and metabolic biomarkers of mitochondrial dysfunction in Parkinson's disease. As many of you know, we have known since the 1980s that mitochondrial dysfunction is associated with Parkinson's disease, specifically perturbations in part one of the mitochondrial respiratory chain. Um, it's pretty well established at this point that mitochondrial dysfunction contributes to path Parkinson's pathophysiology, and it has long been um, thought that we might someday be able to target mitochondrial enhancement of function as a strategy for stopping or slowing Parkinson's disease progression. This research has been thwarted by an inability to measure mitochondrial function in living tissue. Mito magnetic resonance spectroscopy allows us to do just that. This team has previously done the MRS on brain glutathione levels in people with Parkinson's disease. And for this study, we turned our attention to muscle, skeletal muscle in people with Parkinson's disease. Uh, for those who need a reminder about biochemistry, what we the hypothesis is that there would be too much NADH, NADH, not enough NAD, and an insufficiency of ATP. So uh, the University of Washington has a cohort of healthy individuals mitochondrial measures ages 65 to 85. We use that as our comparator. And with this study, we went out and recruited 30 individuals with a diagnosis of idiopathic Parkinson's disease who were honing our stage two to three. Um, we, um, in spite of the pandemic, we met our recruitment goals of the 30 people who qualified for study participation. We got a readable signal on 27 of them. The, we looked at two different muscles, the FDI and the tibialis anterior in the hand and the leg. We used MRI to measure size of muscle and MR spectroscopy to measure ATP and NADH. As you can see, uh, there was an insufficiency of total ATP in the Parkinson's disease cohort. There was an insufficiency of NAD in the Parkinson's cohort compared to the healthy controls. And for NADH, both cohorts were below the level of detection. In terms of clinical relevance, we saw that ATP insufficiency was associated with lower skeletal muscle endurance. And visually, uh, the blue shaded area represents muscle endurance on healthy controls, as opposed to the red and green shaded areas represent the uh, muscle endurance of a typical Parkinson's patient. So you can see the insufficiency there. Here, I'm just calling out the four um, findings that were statistically significant. Uh, there was slightly larger muscle size, weaker force, weaker, lower NAD, and lower ATP. In terms of clinical relevance, there was absolutely no association that we could find between ATP, NAD levels, or UPDRS, honing yar, promised quality of life measures, or patient-reported symptoms. We did take it a step further and look do an exploratory analysis looking for any potential relationship with individual symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And we saw that higher ATP levels were associated with less apathy and less REM sleep behavior disorder. So in conclusion, it was feasible to obtain mitochondrial measurements of 27 of the 30 people with Parkinson's disease, the leg muscle to be at least anterior was superior to the hand muscle in terms of us getting a clean signal. Uh, we saw deficiencies or insufficiency of NAD and ATP in the Parkinson's disease cohort. And um, ATP was associated with less apathy and REM sleep behavior disorder. So these findings suggest that Parkinson's disease is not just a brain disorder, but a systemic metabolic disorder, and future directions of research should include looking at uh, mitochondrial measurements in individuals earlier in the course of this disease, ideally prodromal Parkinson's disease, but even honing our stage one early diagnosis drug naive cohort would be the next step. Um, certainly, we'd like to see if, if NAD and ATP might be biomarkers of Parkinson's disease progression or if they're agnostic bar biomarkers that help us um, with drug development. I want to acknowledge my team at the University of Washington and Kevin Conley, who initiated this whole project and passed away before the study got up and running. Thank you very much.